thread. There we go. All right. And it's already a good morning for me. Brad Taylor, it is so good to see you. Amen. Right there's a good reason to celebrate this morning. We do welcome each and every one of you to Hope's Point today for what's going to be a unique Sunday service. No, Pastor Moore's not gone. You just saw him. In fact, he's going to be speaking in a few minutes here later. And no, it's not a special holiday today. You didn't miss anything on your calendars, okay? This Sunday has been designated as Hope's Point Student Youth Sunday. It's a chance for you as a Hope's Point church family to get to meet the various teams involved in our youth program as we attempt to relaunch the youth ministry program here at the church. Now, there might be a couple of you wondering, whoa, 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 wait a minute, the church has a teenage youth ministry? Because you've never had the opportunity to get back in the back wing on Sunday mornings and see what we're all about. And then there's probably a lot more of you that are wondering, wait a minute, don't we already have a pretty thriving youth department that's been active for a long time? Why do we need a relaunch? And so we want to address both of those questions right up front before we do anything else today. Yes, the church has indeed had a teenage youth ministry. I've been very fortunate to utilize my ministry calling as a high school teacher to help in this endeavor for more than 20 years now. And in that time, there have been a lot of wonderful people serving alongside me and the teenagers of our church. We've always centered our Sunday mornings around God's Word and working our way chapter by chapter through various books in the Bible or else studying various uh, acknowledged Bible studies like Henry Blackaby's Experiencing God and Rick Warren's Purpose Driven Life. And many of our teenagers have long ago graduated from high school and college and they're now leading productive adult lives here in Shelby County and elsewhere serving God in many capacities. This is a testament to so many people here at Hope's Point that have previously invested their time their resources, and their spiritual love into the lives of these teenagers. And I want to begin today's service by simply saying a long overdue thank you. Thank you for your prayers, your guidance, your encouragement that has helped this new generation to serve so many capacities in this church and in churches around our state and our country. And a special thank you really needs to be extended to all of our volunteers past and present that serve in the nursery, in foundations class, and in the upper room. You have given selflessly time and time and time again to make a true spiritual difference in the lives of the children at Hope's Point that currently benefit from your teachings and your counseling and your Christian love that exist in our youth ministry programs each and every Sunday here at the church. To name all these volunteers would take far too much time today, but again, thank you to each and every one of you. What I would like to take a moment to do this morning is to recognize those who have been serving with our teenagers these past few years since today is Teenage Youth Ministry Sunday. Jason and Beth Coffey have graciously volunteered as teachers when their children Emily and Jacob started attending Upper Room, and they have certainly been instrumental in helping plan for this relaunch of our ministry for these past few months. All of you know Scott Todd, the man who needs no introduction, right? He's had his hand in so many activities around the church, but he always seems to find time for our teenagers. And for the past few years, both Del Sipes and Paul Finley have done an expert job in teaching the books of the Bible to our students and loving them and counseling them week in and week out. I know that many of you have only been a part of our Hope's Point family for a few months or so, so I'd like to ask Jason and Beth and Scott and Del and Paul to stand and be recognized for their efforts, if you would, real quickly. Thank you. And if any of you here in attendance today volunteer in the nursery or foundations, could you also stand for just a second and be recognized for your efforts? You're the reason why we have teenagers in our youth program. Thank you. We're here today and every Sunday to bring honor and glory to God, not to ourselves. But it's important for everyone in the church to understand just how many people it takes to truly serve this church each and every single Sunday. There are always opportunities available every single week for every single person in this church to utilize his and her talents to serve God by serving other people. And we'll be stressing this again later on in the service with an opportunity for all of you to become involved in this relaunch of the teenage ministry. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to some of the teens currently in our upper room ministry. If you could all come forward, just line up right here in the front real quickly. I'd like to introduce all of you here. Don't be shy. It's easy to recognize them today with the shirts on. Trent, that's the fastest I've ever seen you move besides the soccer ball. Way to go. 
Up in front right now, we have Riley Lee, Nolan Smothers, Adam Carroll, Jacob Coffey, Ethan Sipes, and Trent Todd. I know we also have Addison Smothers serving in the, in the coffee bar right now. So uh, just want to recognize all of them for being here today. There are others who could not be here today, but uh, just give them a round of applause for all their efforts as well. Thank you, guys. So now to those questions. Why the need for a relaunch this particular Sunday? While my years of heading up the teaching in the upper room have definitely been enjoyable, rewarding, and a time of great spiritual growth for me personally, my extreme involvement as a high school teacher and drama director and sports announcer and Bible study leader at Triton have always limited the time that I can invest in the lives of our students here. Triton Central is my 24-7 mission field. My wife Tiffany will testify to that. And the Hopes Point teens are always a group that I love spending all my Sunday mornings with and continue to look forward to doing so in the future, but I simply cannot invest a great deal of extra time throughout the week, which our teenagers need. We've always needed someone who's willing, able, and trained in youth ministry that can organize more activities for our youth and invest in them regularly. And the timing of all this could not be more perfect. Isn't it amazing how God's calendar is always perfect? Between the monumental changes that are occurring in our country in 2020, the social unrest that we have seen everywhere, the eroding of families and Christian values that our older generation naturally benefited from through parenting and solid church backgrounds, which these teens often don't have, and especially the isolation that is occurring due to the ironically named social media and the COVID crisis that our world is currently facing, today's teenagers are questioning everything. They're living in fear like no generation ever before. They are in desperate need of the hope that can only be found in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and the truth that can only be found in reading and applying God's word in their daily lives. And let me tell you, folks, teenagers are desperately searching. They just don't know where to look. They're looking at websites. They're looking at the world's entertainment. They're looking at our failing political and societal structures that we once trusted in, and they're not finding the truth anywhere. So... They're either giving up all hope, and many of them have, or else they're buying into the rampant modern secularism that says that anything can be the truth now. Just go with your feelings. But make no mistake, teenagers are searching for truth. And shame on us as Christians who have that truth if we don't endeavor to point this generation to that truth that can only be found in Christ and his word. Now, before you start thinking, whoa, 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 I can't teach teenagers, we're not asking anybody here to do that. We already have several excellent teachers that God has already put in place at this church to be teaching our classes. But we are asking each of you to consider small ways to invest in our teens through prayer, through food. Don't know if you've noticed the teenagers like to eat. And especially through sharing your story. Many of you have faced similar struggles as teenagers, and you can relate to the struggles our teenagers are currently facing. Some of you felt God's presence as teenagers, and you can encourage them how to similarly listen to the Holy Spirit as you once did. And maybe many more of you, including myself, no doubt succumbed to peer pressure of other teens at one time or another and gave in to that rebellious nature that all teenagers possess. And you can share that story with our teens to help them see their need for Christ and to listen. But make no mistake about it, just because today's teenagers seem to be staring at their phones 24-7 and ignoring everything around them, many of them are indeed searching for hope and truth. The events of 2020 have only served to make us all realize, even teenagers, that we need to reassess our priorities and the need for human relationships, and not just another Zoom meeting and Instagram and social media posts. I want to share with you an email that I received from one of my senior students back in late May. It was a rough year for that class of 2020. They didn't get a senior prom. They didn't get the normal graduation ceremony. Many of them never got to finish their high school athletic careers and will never be in another organized sport again. They had to try to wrap up some college credit courses through less than efficient e-learning for two solid months. And I'm sure a lot of you felt sorry for them and you wondered why God would have allowed something like all of this to occur. But God's got his mysterious ways that none of us are ever going to understand. But the Bible promises all things work to the greater glory of God for those who love him. And so I want to share with you the words of an 18-year-old football player who he showed some interest in church, but he wasn't a consistent member of any denomination. And he came occasionally to our FCA Bible study and was interested, but not overly so. 
And for anyone here today who's given up hope in America, who's given up hope for this next generation, or maybe you've wondered if God's through trying to mess with any of us, and especially these self-absorbed teenagers, I want you to remember this email, if nothing else today. Here's how it read. During this quarantine, Mr. Wilson, I have focused on the Bible, and I regularly think about what I can better, do better as a Christian to make my relationship go with Christ. While everyone else is worried about the coronavirus, I find myself very calm for the first time in my life because my faith and trust now rest in Christ. Now, this is a first for me. I've always been an avid overthinker, dealing with a lot of anxiety through high school, and I've always struggled with giving it all to God until 2020. Over the past few weeks, I have been reading three or four chapters of the gospel every day. Jesus can calm storms. He can make blind men see. He can walk on water. He fed 5,000 people with one boy's lunch. And here in America, I see people with such little faith that they're fighting over toilet paper. This lack of faith has driven me to find even more faith in God. I'm only just now discovering a fraction of what God alone can do. This unique moment in time is a warning that our values are not on him, even if you think they are. We value the perishables instead of the eternal. We need to start focusing on his love and forgiveness. That's what's imperishable and a great example for me and all of us to follow. That quote now resides on a big sign in my classroom with the student's name attached to it with his permission. As a public school teacher, I can't proclaim God's truth from 8 until 3. But my students can. And this student's profession has been on my classroom wall every single day this new school year as a reminder to me to keep doing what I can to help reach every single teenager that is out there searching for truth through the events of the 21st century that God is divinely orchestrating right now to bring his eternal kingdom greater glory. And God's doing that right here in our own church, right now. Just a few months ago, he brought the Kirosh family to our church. If you've not had a chance yet to meet Rodrigo and Heather, I would encourage you to do so. They have an amazing story of how God's grace and mercy and provision are not just a thumbprint on their lives, but have penetrated every single facet of their lives. Heather's a trained youth minister and has led several youth programs throughout the Midwest, as well as a published Christian author. Much more importantly, she has an undeniable heart for youth and youth programs, especially teenagers. And as a new stay-at-home mother, she has that extra time to devote her talents and hearts to our teenagers, to organize some extra programs for them, and to simply love them and lead them in God's truth. And so for those of you that haven't yet met her, I would like to introduce you this morning to Mrs. Heather Kielosh. of Jeff to say all those really kind words. I feel very humbled in the position that God has put me in this morning to be able to invest myself in this way and with this tremendous group of youth leaders and these tremendous young people. Um, I've had just a great time in the short time that I've had in getting to know them. Uh, and I look forward to the time where we get to know each other more and we get to see God do even more exceedingly expectantly than we could ask or imagine. But I just want to share really briefly a little bit about myself and, um, and just continue on Youth Sunday because it's not about me. It's really about what God's doing and th where we want to ask you to come and join us in what God's doing in our student ministry. Um, so as you can see, we, this, this church has had great leaders like Jeff and Paul and Dell and Scott and the Coffees and all those of the rest of you who have served and have loved these young people and have helped them ra be raised up to know the Lord. And now church, God is asking us to partner with him in a bigger vision. 2020 is not a year where darkness will take the church down. 2020 is a year where the church can be reversed. And I believe that as we come together as the body of Christ, that God can do exceedingly, exceedingly more than all we could ever ask or imagine. And that as we, as the older generations of the church, invest in the younger generations of the church, the church is revived. <laughs> and so today could be a new beginning. 
but I don't want to get too far into that. I might start getting chatty. I get like Ed sometimes, I think. But um, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. So, uh, but just real briefly about myself, if you want to pull up that picture there, um, Trent. Thanks, Trent, for serving in the back. So if you haven't yet, really my favorite person on the planet is not just my husband, but our daughter, Ada. She is our precious 10 and a half, half month old girl. She's napping right now. My husband's at home. Um, but she'll, if you ever come to second service, you can meet them. And uh, I love my husband. Uh, he's a great, wonderful man. We've been married for about six and a half or so years. Um, we had our daughter, uh, obviously, December 29th of 2019. So she'll be a year old. And for all you mamas out there, how does this happen? How do they grow up so fast? I'm like, but she's just going to keep growing up. and I'm going to have to deal with it. So Anyways, that's a little bit uh, of my family. We, we moved here to Indiana about a year ago, and we're super happy that God has placed us here at Hope's Point Church. So, But let's continue to worship the Lord together today. So I think if the worship team wants to come up, uh, then we'll go ahead and, and worship together the Lord. But let me pray uh, as they come up. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for uh, the work that you're doing in this student ministry. Thanks that I get to be a part of it. Thanks that... Uh, Thanks that you are doing a great work um, in the midst of darkness, God, that your light shines forth. So, God, would you just join with us now as we seek to worship you in song and in praise, that our hearts would rise up to you, and that we would have a spirit of unity in this church today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to Hope's Point. I'm Adam. And I'm Jacob, and this is the 317. We want to thank you for joining us today. If you're joining us for the first time, please fill out a connection card so we can have a record of your visit. Since this is Youth Takeover Sunday, we thought we would steal the show. We thought we would give everyone some tips on how to be more hip and groovy with the times. Tip number one, if you're having trouble with your electronic device, please turn it off and on again before you ask us for help. We're not all electrical engineers. Tip number two, remember that your parents used to hate your music too. Tip number three, when you're teaching us to drive, yelling at us when we go one mile over the speed limit is not constructive. And hanging on to the handle from above your window for dear life doesn't help matters either. Finally, tip number four, just keep being examples because one day we'll be just like you. Anyways, be sure to check, check out all our social media pages and even listen to, the, to past sermons at hopespoint.com. Don't forget to join us for one of our Bible studies on Sundays at 5.30 p.m., Mondays at 5 p.m., and Wednesdays at 6 p.m. However, the Thursday morning study has been canceled until December 3rd. The Sunday study is led by Cy Story and Marsha Tackett. The Monday evening study will be led by Mike Combs or Laura Lee, while the ladies' recovery group will be led by Karen Hampton. The Wednesday's recovery groups will be led by Brad Taylor and Heather Kuros. We also want to remind you to give online or place, in, place an offering, offering in the plates on the back tables on your way out. Finally, please take a moment right now to silence your mobile device. Yes, I am speaking to you, coffees. Middle section, near the back, I'm watching. That said, sit back and let's worship together. Um, my name's Riley. My parents' names are Clint and Kelly, and I've been going here since I was born. My name is Trent Todd. Um, my parents' names are Scott and Rachel Todd. And I've been at the church um, pretty much since I was 14 years old. My name is Ethan Sipes. My parents' names are Adam and Tracy Sipes, and I've been here my whole life. Um, my name's Nolan Smothers. My parents' names are Larry and Chelsea Smothers. And I've been coming here since I was like one to like about 15 years. My name is Adam Carroll. My parents are uh, Michael and Melissa Carroll. And I've been going to Hope's Point ever since I was born. Uh, I'm Jacob Coffey. And my parents are Beth and Jason Coffey. And I've been at the church for 17 years. So my entire life. My name is Addison Smothers, and my parents' name is Larry and Chelsea, and I've been here since I was born. Hello, my name is Ross Hendrickson. My parents are Angie and Philip Hendrickson, 
And I have been attending Hook Point my whole life. Um, fun fact about me, um, I participate in a lot of activities in school that are all about music. And I participate in music at the church. So, one thing people may not know about me specifically, I mean, some people do. I love playing piano. I love it a lot. I've taught myself how to play. And then a fun fact about me is I have my license and I play basketball. Fun fact is I play soccer and I play drums at the church. Um, a fun fact about me is I'm on my second year in the culinary course at Blue River Career Programs. And yeah, that's the Um, I won like a drug free poster contest. Um, like I drew something that says like say no to drugs or something related. I love animals. Um, I can walk on my hands. Until I fall. I mean, I can walk pretty far. Probably, like, more than half this room. Hmm. Well, probably whenever we went to uh, Jeff's house, we stayed the night, and then we went to King's Island the next day. Um, favorite memory was getting baptized. And my favorite memory of being at Hope's Point is probably helping Warren with the VBSs and helping teach the children and lead other activities. Probably when I got baptized and whenever we go, like, the high school, middle schoolers, when we go, like, hiking and, like, other, like, historical places, that was fun. Like, when I'm able to help the little kids. My best memory is... um Whenever we went hiking one time, and there's, I, there was like a creek, and we had to walk across it, and I fell into the river and got all muddy, and I was like, there. Um, my favorite memory is just coming here with all my family and cousins and just doing the lessons. It's really fun. I would say both of the summer camps when I was younger, and a lot of the quotes that have come from me out of that, if you know, you know. Hmm. They like the people here teach me slowly, like about scriptures and stuff. Um, Hope's Point has helped me grow in my faith because it gives me like a second family to come to whenever I feel like upset or if I need something to get my mind off of something. I always come here. Uh, I mean, Hope's Point is basically taught me everything I know. Everything I've grown up with is all from Hope's Point in terms of my strength and connection with God. So, And Hope's Point has helped me grow in my faith by um, being in the upper room. It's helped me a lot, like probably just like reading from the Bible and like, helps me, like, get more into it, understanding it better. It's helped me realize how, like, powerful God is and how he can save you from going to hell. Um, by seeing, like, everyone else's testimonies and how much, like, God has impacted their life, and you can, like, see, like, you can relate to it, and it's just, like, it really shows you, like, how much he can impact. It's helping me grow because it's pretty much right where I've been taught everything about me, about Jesus. Being involved at Hope's Point has grown my faith specifically with God because I have, I've done VBS with church. I've actually went, I believe it was 20... 15 with Lauren Sipes to a missionary training up at Indiana Wesleyan University for a week. And we helped do five day clubs around the Shelby County area where we would go to churches, trailer parks, wherever we could find a club to do to help spread the gospel of Jesus to the children. 
and that was such an eye-opening experience. It really was. Just to, like, you know, watch a child get saved, it's just one of the most amazing things you could ever see in your life. Because you know that child's going to have such a good relationship with Jesus. And it makes you just want to cry because it's so, it, it's amazing. Hmm. That being a teenager now is not how it was back in the 70s or 80s. It's very different. And there's, you go through different stuff. And school is very different. And, you know, people can like to compare it to when they were, younger, but it's just not the same. There's like a lot of more responsibilities and there's like a lot of pressure. A bunch of people that would understand that um, it's really hard being a teenager with all the people. There's a lot of like violence. Sometimes there's hatred. It's just not good. Um, Probably like the society and also just like people in high school and how judgy people can be and like just no filter technology and stuff like some people are rude on social media or something like because they didn't you guys didn't have social media back then probably how hard school has gotten and like there's a lot of bad stuff that kids do at school and stuff and easy to get like yourself into it and get in trouble and stuff nowadays there's a lot of like bad stuff out there one thing i wish people understood more about being a teenager from my perspective at least is to be more patient i just feel like people get so impatient with us when we don't do exactly what they want us to do when we do it you know we could be going through something that they don't know about so i i specifically wish People could be just a little bit more patient with that, but that's just me. Having phones and social media in these years of our life is not all it's cracked up to be. I, I, I think I hear a lot about how people are kind of jealous, how we have all this freedom in our technology, but yeah, I would not say it's been the absolute greatest for some. Some people just kind of play too much into it. Some people just spend a lot of too much time on stuff like that. And it kind of warps their view a bit of the world and their connection to God. So, not really a net positive. Tina, it's uh, great to see you here at church today. Thank you. 
I need to apologize for that awkward silence at the beginning of service today. I just want you to know that I really don't care about you. And the church does too. And a lot of adults here too. You know, yeah, I, I hope you forgive me for that awkward silence. Is that okay? You're a eighth grader, right? A freshman. Oh, <laughs> wow. High school. <laughs> First year. Kind of brutal. <laughs> I remember. I was uh, sort of a nerd myself. <laughs> yeah. In fact, uh, I even have a picture here. Check it out. Yeah, I had a mullet. Why would you do that to your hair? Uh, well, uh, I'm from Waldron. People used to wear their hair like that. <laughs> Some people at Waldron still do. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I guess it was just a David Bowie phase or something. <laughs> David Bowie? Labyrinth? Dean Martin of the 70s and 80s? Dean Lewis? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Long decade. Um, Billy Joel. Does he sound like David before it was <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> look, in this uh, coming to church, I'd like to encourage you to maybe consider our teen activities we usually have at 9.30 in the morning. Um, lots of teens go. Uh, they have a great breakfast at 9.30, and then they follow it up with discussions of God's Word and um, how it centers in their lives. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you today for giving us the opportunity to not only get together to celebrate you, but to celebrate this amazing resurgence of our wonderful student members coming to you. It's really comforting to know that someone like you, someone who has infinite power, wants to focus on helping the youngest of, among us here to thrive in you and be able to love you to their full extent. And it is absolutely amazing to know that not only you care about all of us, but everyone here does as well, and that you granted us this ability to speak to those of us here who are older who know a lot more than we do sometimes and 
just let them bring their knowledge to us of you and help us grow in our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Jacob. Um, I just want to share a bit of an invitation for the congregation today as we kind of wrap up our time for Youth Sunday. But how I want to do that is I want to do it by sharing about a couple of people whom God has put in my life the past few years. This first gentleman started serving in youth ministry 23 years ago. He started serving in youth ministry because the youth director at their church just happened to resign, and there was a need for somebody to step up and lead the youth ministry in the interim. This gentleman, 23 years ago, just happened to be the age of 70 years old. I want you to meet a gentleman who I have had the privilege of getting to know. He is the most loved youth leader at my friend Zach's church in Bettendorf, Iowa. He is 93 years old, and his name is Ray. If we could pull up Ray's picture just real quick, that'd be great. Um, and Ray... <laughs> has some things about him. Disregard the book there. This is the only good picture I have of Ray. But that's Ray there. And I had a great time getting to know Ray and hearing his story. You see, my friend Zach told me, he said, you know, Heather, the students can feel Ray's heart for them. Each week, Ray would come with some three-by-five note cards, and he would ask the students how he could pray for them. And then he would pray for them throughout the week, and he would come back the next week, and he would say, hey, how's, that, how's your test? How did, how's your grandmother doing? How are these things in your life that I've been praying for going? And these students, 15, 16, 17 years old, were more drawn to Ray than they were to that 20-year-old youth leader. Because Ray had things in his life that all of you have as well. Ray had wisdom, he had love from Jesus, and he had time. And all of those three, three things put together make for a tremendous youth leader. You see, church, there's a generation who's lonely. There's a generation that needs hope that's afraid. And there's a generation that needs a ray in their life. And today, we as the student ministry team want to invite you into that space. We want to invite you into our youth ministry because really it's our youth ministry. It's not my youth ministry or the youth leader's youth ministry. It's the church's ministry. These are our kids. And God is asking us to be a ray to them. I had the privilege of meeting another, actually I've known this woman for quite a few years, but it was a, a few years ago where I approached her and I, and I said to her, I've got this teen, she's awesome. She is a kingdom worker for Jesus. And the Lord has told me, I was literally hanging out in the kitchen one day of the church and God said, I want you to talk to Jeannie about mentoring Cassidy. And I was like, what? And Jeannie had never served in the youth ministry before. This was not even something that God had ever even put on my radar. And although there's a 50-year age gap between Jeannie and Cassidy, Jeannie trusted God, and she said yes to serving a young person. And now Jeannie and Cassidy are like two peas in a pod. And for the past two years, these two have been meeting on almost a weekly basis. And when Cassidy hopped off to college, now they talk weekly on the phone. You see, there's, there's a bond between the two that only God could form. But see, Jeannie has what Ray has. She has love from Jesus. She has wisdom from years of life experience. And she has time. You may not know how to send a Snapchat. I, I've never sent one. You may not know how to even access a smartphone. You may still be rocking that flip phone. But you have love from Jesus. You have time. 
and you have wisdom. In Psalm 78, if we could pull that up here, the psalmist says this, we will not hide from them, their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power, and the wonders he has done. So church family, today we want to invite you into our youth ministry space where it becomes our youth ministry because there are lost and lonely teenagers sitting not just in our congregation, but in our community. And although 2020 has proven to be a dark time, it is not the end. There is still kingdom work for us to do. And if we are willing to go with God, to raise up the next generation, to not be fearful people, but to be people who would stand upon the promises of God, who would say, even in our darkest hour, we trust that God is victor, that he is good, that he will help us get to the next level of him, even though the darkness wants to steal us into a place of despair. So friends, today, we're asking you to simply take a step of faith. To simply ask God, what is my step? in raising up the next generations because these teenagers need a Ray and they need a genie. They need the investment of adults who would be willing to care for them. Youth ministry researcher and champion of youth ministry, Jack Clark, did some research in his time when he served as a substitute teacher in California. And during his time serving as a substitute teacher, he came to this realization. He said in his book, Hurt 2.0, that students are desperate for an adult who cares. That unfortunately, a lot of the systems that were created to help shepherd and nurture children have lost their missional mandate. That students can feel that there's something that people want from me. There's an agenda here. I'm involved in church. I'm involved in sports or scouts or all these different programs. But I feel that there's an adult's agenda to just help me meet their need for something. And they're desperate for a Ray. And they're desperate for a genie who would simply say, here's my life to love and serve and care for you with no strings attached. And so, church, what we're inviting you into today to be a part of our youth ministry programming is to do just that, to be that adult who cares for that lonely Tina, for those kids on our screen who said being a teenager is hard. And you know that. You were a teenager once as well. But there's something I've noticed this over the years. There's something that the enemy loves to do in the older generations, and he loves to say, you can't relate. They won't care what you have to say. You're too old for this. And church, we're telling you, you're not. We need you. We want you. So there's a few ways that we're inviting the congregation to partner with us in the relaunch of our student ministry. The first is this. The third Sunday of every month, if we could pull up that first slide, share your story. The first Sunday of every month, the third Sunday, I believe I said what I meant to say, we're going to be heading off to McDonald's. Our new student ministry time is going to be from 9.30 to 10.45 a.m. up in the upper room during first service so that the students will stick around and worship with us during the 11 o'clock hour. But during that 9.30 hour, the students are going to have their time where adults are going to be loving and caring and serving them and investing in their lives. But the third Sunday of every month, we're going to head off to McDonald's. They're on Route 9, and we're going to listen to a story of faith from one of the adults in our congregation. But we want you to sign up to go and be a part of that. So in the, uh, back there in the tables after the church service today, you can sign up to join us for a third, or excuse me, to join us for a third Sunday of the month out of McDonald's to come and share your story of what God has done in your life. So whether you're 16 or 96, we want you there. <laughs> 
And another way that you can help serve our students and help uh, come together as a church community, just pull up that second slide if you would please, is as a prayer partner. Maybe for you, it feels a little bit too intimidating, Heather, for me to meet y'all at McDonald's or to really be a little bit more involved in the student ministry, but you can pray. And, and as, as uh, Pastor Ed has been sharing, when it comes to revival, if my people will humble themselves and pray, God will do what? He will hear from heaven. He will heal our land. And guys, young people need our prayers. We need your prayers as we seek to love and care for them. And each week during our student ministry time upstairs in the upper room, the students are going to be given a prayer card where they can write out what their prayer concerns are, similar to what Ray does for the students at Heritage Church in Bettendorf, Iowa. And as we gather those prayer cards, I'm asking a group of people who might be willing to simply pray for those cards. And so if you would love to pray for our students, you can sign up to be one of our prayer partners in the back today, and I'll shoot you an email once a month with those prayer concerns. The third slide is this. As Jeff alluded to earlier, teenagers love to eat. I love to eat. Who doesn't love to eat, right? And so, <laughs> so we have what's called here the breakfast brigade, right? And so this is essentially what we're asking four people to do is provide breakfast for our students once every two months. So we're asking four people once every two months to provide breakfast for 15 to 20 people. So if you love to cook or if you know how to swipe your card at Lenny's Pastries, then you are the person for this one. And so if you would love to help provide breakfast for our students and be put on that rotation, would you just hop back to the table there and sign up for that as well? And the last opportunity for you to support our students today and Lord willing, there'll be more opportunities in the future as we trust God to grow within us a deeper love and investment for the generations. Is um, As you see here, we're all rocking some pretty cool t-shirts. And if you stick around in second service, my daughter has one I bought one for. It's really tiny. It's really cute looking on her. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. But um, you can purchase a student ministry shirt today, and all of the proceeds of that t-shirt uh, will go to fund the student ministry program. So you can visit one of the tables back there. Also, there's some books for purchase that the books, the money for those books will go to fund the student ministry as well. And so, church, would you join us today in what God is doing in the relaunch of our student ministry? Not only do we need you, but we want you to be a part of what God is doing. Pastor Ed. This is one they want me to use. Yeah, that was especially just for you guys. All right. Okay, just to, just to wrap up this morning, has your heart been blessed? Amen. Amen. It's so good. Um, I was very, very fortunate by the sovereign providence of God to, um, to be a part of this fellowship as a young man growing up, uh, as a young kid growing up in this town, I was really a, a true ecumenical. Um, my mother started us off at the Pennsylvania Street Church of God. And then we switched over to the Montgomery Street Assembly of God. Then I stayed with my, uh, when my mom started having problems, I stayed uh, for several months with, um, for several months with an aunt and uncle and uh, they were Methodists. And so you can imagine <clears throat> going from a church where people were being slain in the spirit to where the congregation was so extremely quiet at the First Methodist Church in Shelbyville. I went from one extreme to the other. And then I was very, very blessed to have a family, um, Berthel and Marilyn Coffey, Buell and Bernice Coffey, James and Bethel, who had become a part of this assembly here back in the 60s, um, early 60s. And, and they took a burden. They got a burden for their family, uh, for my sister Laura and I. And not only us, but other family members 
uh, that were young teenagers at that time. And we were out of church uh, at that particular time in our lives. We were, uh, uh, my father gave us the opportunities. If you don't want to go to church, you don't have to go to church. When mom ended up at Madison State Hospital with some of her problems, but we had aunts and uncles that made um, an effort to make sure that we stayed in church and stayed under the gospel. But when we came to church, you may not know these names, but these will be names written on the Hall of Fame in my heart forever. Uh, Bill and Marianne Smith, Harold and Virgie Garut, Don and Mona Bowles, Jerry and Gloria Yancey, Ray and Helen Messmore, Art and Gretchen Cole, Cleo Krebs. Those three took me to uh, a meeting in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. It was called the Bill Rice Ranch. They took me on a journey, and I got to hear those three couples. I got to, well, Cleo was a single, a single, she was one of our Sunday school teachers here. She was a single lady, but Art and Gretchen and Helen and Ray, I got to listen to them argue all the way to Murphy Burroughs, Tennessee. They argued about whether or not a saxophone should ever be allowed in a church and electric guitars because some of the gospel groups were using electric guitars and there were some people that were playing those worldly, sensual saxophones in churches. And I was a 16, 17-year-old teenager, and I thought to myself, oh, my, this is really interesting because I like to hear saxophone, and I like to hear electric guitars, and I like to hear the most, the most terrible of all instruments. I even like to hear drums. <laughs> but anyway, but wow, what an interest they took in my life not only on that occasion, but other occasions, and how many times Art Wilson uh, would, have, would come to me as a young man and tell me how much he appreciated uh, my faithfulness and would pray for me. And when the Sunday morning that uh, I announced this church, that I felt very strongly about going into the ministry. Uh, he was the first who came to the front and um, embraced me. And with tears in his eyes, he said, you go in my place. Because he said, as a young man, I was called to preach, and I didn't go. Will you go in my place? And I said, Art, I'll do the best I can. And I know that he was a prayer warrior to the day he died. And so I, I'm a recipient not only of my mother, who dedicated me to the Lord as a baby. Um, if you think I'm a little messed up, it's probably because... I was dedicated on the altar of a, of a, of a holy roller church. <laughs> so give me, just give me a break, okay? I know I'm a little squirrely, but uh, that's probably what's wrong with me, Debbie. Uh, I think you were dedicated there too. So that's why the both of us are a little bit squirrely. See, Jeff? <laughs> but anyway... Um, Then I think of Gene and Ruth Taylor. You know, when I grew up here, Gene and Ruth were older people. I thought they were old. They were in their 40s, but I thought they were old. Now they're in their 90s. But I'll never forget the Sunday morning that Ruth Taylor caught me upstairs in the youth department. We had our youth department was upstairs. We had a we had a piano up there. It's kind of those ranky tank pianos. It's kind of half out of tune. But one Sunday she caught me up there. I, I really got into rock music. I shouldn't have. Um, my youth director told me that it was not good for me, and, and he was absolutely right. It wasn't good for me. But I, I, I loved it a little bit too much, and sometimes I would go upstairs when nobody I thought was listening, and I'd go up there and I'd, I'd rock out. And one Sunday, I was playing a terrible song called Louie Louie. Some of you might know that song. You know that song. Okay. And uh, I'm not going to tell you the rock group. That, but anyway, I was up there pounding away those chords. And Ruth Taylor stepped up right behind me. And I thought, oh, I've been had. Playing a song of the devil in the house of the Lord. 
And she put her arms around me and she said, Eddie, she said, play that again. I like that tune. <laughs> she hated that tune, but she wanted me to know that since I was playing that, that she loved me. That was her way of telling me she loved me. And that she's been a dear sister in my corner ever, ever since. But I think of Gilbert Lee, who picked me up on a Sunday school bus, and his wife, Mabel. Little did I realize they'd be a part of my family. And then I think of uh, Marshall and Juanita Red. Marshall also was a Sunday school bus driver that came back uh, there on Old Franklin Road and Henricks Avenue and, and picked me up. And I'll never forget Mabel Smith, a dear, dear sister, Mabel. Her husband died in 1964, and she decided as a widow, as a young widow, she would give her life to teenagers. And Mabel would have us over at her house on Sunday evenings just to hang out. God bless the memory. And there are so, so many, many more. I think of Pete and Gladys Hendricks. I'm Pete, Pete Hendricks. Brother Pete, I was a junior in high school. I had just surrendered to pursue the ministry. And, and Pete Hendrickson was a Sunday school teacher of seven-year-old boys. And Brother Pastor Garut asked me if I would teach eight-year-old boys in the same house. Uh, we had a house over here that had a Sunday school class, Sunday school classes with Pete Hendrickson. And um, all, I, all I had to do, because I didn't know how to control eight-year-old boys. Some of those boys are still in our church today. Um, among two of them were my two brothers, Mark and Garnet. And uh, whenever I would get a, a young boy uh, who would get out of control, I would just take him by the hand and walk him over to Pete Hendrickson, and he'd put the fear of God in him. And boy, did they ever straighten up. But Pete taught me how to be a Sunday school teacher and how to... How to how to uh, properly conduct a class, and he was a, he was a master at Sunday school teaching. But the list could go on and on and on. And what am I saying is simply this: you know, in the Bible, there are over thirty one another commands given to the church. Yes, it takes a mom and dad who who dedicate their children to the Lord, and grandparents who who pray for their 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 children, their grandchildren, and aunts and uncles and all. But beloved, it takes the entire body of Christ the entire body of Christ. It didn't just take a mom and dad. It didn't just take uh, uh, aunts and uncles. It took this entire assembly to place me. I realize I'm like a turtle on a post. I didn't get here by myself. I'm the product of the influence of many, 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 many people. So would you pray, not only about our teenagers, but our children, but every single brother and sister that you may find as being a child in the faith, to invest yourself, to follow just the simple commands, loving one another, praying one for another, encourage one another, bearing one another's burdens, exhorting one another, serving one another, instructing one another, fellowshipping one another, helping one another, in honor, preferring one another, and the list goes on and on and on. So let's bow together as we close our hour today in thanksgiving. And thank you for putting up with uh, my reminiscing of going down memory lane today, but I couldn't help but think of when I was a teenager as I was listening to these testimonies today of those who instilled in me and, and whose, whose influence still lives on in my life today, hearing the things that they would say in my mind and their prayers and their encouragement. And I think of, I think of the Bible I received from one of our deacons and those who wrote me letters when I was in school, in college. What a difference it makes. Just a little, a little investment in a young person's life goes a long, long way. Father, thank you. Thank you for loving us. And thank you for sustaining us in these days through these very dark times. And yeah, it would have been wonderful if we could have had... Uh, all of our people here today, but I do thank you for those who are willing to come out in a time that we're, it's, it's a, a bit risky right now with uh, the problems they're having in our, in our county and in our state. And I, I just pray, Father, that we would, um, in these times, realize that there are those who are lonely and those who are hurting, and especially among our young people who don't always understand uh, what, what these days are all about. Because even we as adults, we too are walking in a fog and we need clear direction. So may we learn how to trust you and trust you together. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let's, let's stand together if we would. And I'd like to ask you, if you would, in these, uh, in these, these weeks, excuse me, I'm so sorry, in these weeks that are here upon us over the next, uh, next few weeks since we've had uh, such a spike, and we've had several of our own families who are right now in quarantine uh, who have been exposed either at work or with their children or at school and, and, um, and those who are working in the healthcare industry, so healthcare um, environment. So we have a number of our people. So I don't want that to scare you, but I do want to encourage you because we are going to we're going to disinfect the church. We're going to go back to doing that at the close of each service. So I'd like to if you would if you would exit very rapidly out the building, and then if you're going to come back in, uh, especially those who, whose kids are going to be participating in the next service, if you want to come back in, you're welcome to do so. But we would like to have everybody out so we can get it fumigated, and then uh, we'll start back. And then if you would uh, in these next few weeks, kind of limit your time together. Uh, and if you would, we have plenty of masks in the back. If you would be so kind to maybe put a mask on, if you are going to stand and talk, to keep everybody safe. If you keep a mask with you, that's wonderful. But otherwise, we understand. So let's sing together. Uh, there is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. Let's sing it together. Ready? There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. Now, to those of you, some of our older saints who've been here for many, many years, I also want to challenge you, one other challenge today, if you would be mindful, which I try to do this on Sunday mornings, every Sunday morning we have a prayer time, and every Sunday that the Lord prompts my heart to pray, I always want to remember to pray for the young people who walk through these doors, who are now serving as pastors, associate pastors, who are working as missionaries, who are working in, 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 Christian, in Christian service, and those who are in the medical world, those who are in the educational world, those who are doing, has their, have their own business. I have a book right down here in front of me, right here, over to my right. One of our young men that came through this church and then went to Bible college has just written his, his first book, is now an author. Isn't that cool? And uh, I'm going to buy a bunch of those. And, and Heather is also an author. She's written several books. And so we're just so, so blessed. So encourage each other and remember to pray for those who have also passed on, uh, not passed on by way of death, but who've also moved away and are serving in other churches. So thank the Lord for each and every one of our young people. Thank you very much for coming out today. Blessings to you. Enjoy your time for the rest of this day.